Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Kelly Volk. And I'm Dan Centella. Sioux Falls police are once again asking for the public's help to find a missing teenager. 13-year-old Rainy Genesee was last seen on Saturday. Authorities say there were some issues at home, so she left. Police say usually kids who run away will talk with friends or post on social media. In this case, she has not communicated with any of her friends. There hasn't been any posts that we're aware of. Um, really nothing. Um, we have had officers that have been checking all kinds of addresses and friends and talking to them at school. And it's a little unusual because even if we have runaways, they'll still be in contact with their friends. And this isn't the case. If you have seen Genesee or know where she is, you're asked to contact police right away. The police chief of Kingsley, Iowa, has been arrested on allegations of abusing his power to stalk a woman. According to documents, he was in a relationship with a woman until November. Authorities say James Dunn figured out where her new boyfriend was living and taped a letter to his door. The woman asked Dunn not to contact her, her family or her friends. Police say he contacted the woman's mother, saying her boyfriend had a criminal history and was on probation. According to court documents, the woman said she feared for her safety. The Iowa DCI arrested Dunn on Wednesday. Heavy snow this morning in Nebraska is creating travel problems in the eastern part of the state. The Nebraska State Patrol says it has responded to 12 crashes and helped more than 100 drivers, mostly around Lincoln and Omaha. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning until this evening. Farther north up here in Kelloland, it's a little quieter, isn't it, Megan? Yes, and it's going to stay quiet at least through the weekend. We're keeping an eye on the middle of next week, though. Right now, Sioux Falls is sitting at 21 degrees, which is just below average for this time of year. We are a little bit colder up in Aberdeen, sitting at 15 this afternoon with plenty of sunshine, though. Slightly warmer, though, as we head west right now, here at 31 with all of that sunshine and Rapid City sitting at 37 with blue skies. Here's a peek at some of our afternoon temperatures. We do have the teens and low 20s across eastern Kelloland. 30s, though, the farther west we head. We have a very light breeze compared to the last couple days. Right now, anywhere from 5 to 15 miles an hour. Tonight, we will keep those clear skies and light winds around, but cold across eastern Kelloland. One below in Sioux Falls, two below in Aberdeen, 16 in Pier, and 18 in Rapid City. And tomorrow, due to plenty of sunshine and a south wind, we will start warming up. 30 are high for Sioux Falls, 35 in Aberdeen, 52 in Pier, and 52 in Rapid City. And on Saturday, keeping those winds light, maybe a few more clouds across southeastern Kelloland, 32 for Sioux Falls, 33 in Aberdeen, 49 in Pier, and 48 in Rapid City. And Sunday looks to be much of the same. But like I said, we're keeping an eye on the middle of next week for our next chance of some snow. Thanks, Megan. Today, Governor Kristi Noem highlighted South Dakota's approach to the COVID-19 pandemic in front of an audience in Washington, D.C. Noem spoke at the Cato Institute, a libertarian public policy research organization. The governor criticized other states for shutting down while touting her plan to keep South Dakota open. However, Nome did shut down schools and signed an executive order for high-risk people to stay home in Minnehaha and Lincoln counties. This is one of three events Nome is speaking at this week. Her final speech is tomorrow. Former Vice President Mike Pence visited Minnesota and Iowa on Wednesday. Pence criticized critical race theory and says he's defending parental rights. Specifically, the former Vice President referenced a court case related to a school district in the Cedar Rapids area concerning transgender student policies. Any child that asks will be given gender transition plan created by the school district without the parent's knowledge or consent. Let me say that again, because it's at the core of this issue. And I believe it's an issue not that the majority of the American people stand with us on, but I have to, th I think it's got to be almost every parent in America. 
Pence's group says they filed a lawsuit against the school district to overturn the policy. A counter protest was organized outside the facility. This comes after Noam signed a bill into law banning gender affirming care for transgender minors in South Dakota. The Minnesota Supreme Court says the state's current law barring felons from voting is constitutional. It says Minnesotans convicted of felonies can't vote until their sentence is complete, including probation or parole. But as Caroline Cummings with our CBS affiliate in the Twin Cities reports, a bill in the Capitol could change that. This is a bad day for democracy. Felon voting rights advocates on Wednesday were disappointed in the Minnesota Supreme Court decision that didn't go in their favor. The majority opinion said plaintiffs didn't provide sufficient evidence to show current restrictions violate the equal protection principle in the Minnesota Constitution. The court also said barring voting until a sentence is complete, including probation and parole, doesn't infringe on the fundamental right to vote. Justice Paul Thiessen, in the majority opinion, acknowledged the impact of current law when it comes to racial disparities. And while he says the rules pass constitutional muster, there's another avenue for changes, writing, quote, the legislature retains the power to respond to those consequences. Our clients now have no recourse uh, to the courts, and it is therefore past time for the legislature to act. And at the Capitol, Democrats in charge say they are ready to respond. The Minnesota House earlier this month approved a bill allowing people to vote as soon as they're released from prison. Two Republicans joined DFLers in voting yes. I urge the Minnesota legislature to restore my right to vote. Jennifer Schroeder is one of the plaintiffs who's currently serving a 40-year probation sentence. Under current law, she can't vote until she's 71. That was Caroline Cummings reporting from the Twin Cities. The legislature is inching closer to changing that law. The bill is primed for a full Senate vote as early as next week.